good Sunday morning. I hope you're having a wonderful start of worship. Lord's Day. We are in 1 Corinthians 6 and I have a question. Are you the one where if there is a dispute, there is some drama in a group of people, especially in the church, that people could go to you, both sides, who have a dispute and they say, you know what? He or she, they're a wise one. They're balanced. They have good judgment. Let's go to them. Well, Paul is saying in the start of this scripture, this chapter, that, you know what, we should not, especially in the body of Christ, be going to the world, the world system, to settle disputes. We should not have to go file lawsuits and get the docket and, and go before a judge. No, he's saying there should be at least one highly esteemed person of an excellent spirit in your church in your body who can hear both sides of a dispute and then hear from the Lord. Are you that one? It could be at your job too. If, you know, of course you have drama, you know, wherever you have human beings, you know, congregate, you're going to have differences, opinions, but are you able to be level-headed? You know, the, the Bible talks about so many people who have had excellent spirits, right? Job and Daniel and, you know, Daniel, you know, was even in, politics and he was able to you know get promoted because he was a man of God and he had discernment. So the first E word is excellence of spirit. God wants us to have that so that we can make a difference and we don't have to uh, be represented by the world system. Then the second E word is in verse nine and Paul goes through a laundry list of Folks, who's not going to inherit the kingdom of God, right? Thieves, fornicators, revilers, you know, people, railers, mm -mm, blasphemous, abusers. But there's one word that I tell you, we never hear about, but it's an old school word, effeminate. And I look at my, I look at my old dictionary from my parents' house and effeminate is Lacking in manly qualities, showing weakness or um, delicacy in not manly. Now, I one can be a product of their environment. Maybe they, you know, have a personality that's not raw, right? I got that. Paul has that. But are you acting on that and you're being fooled by the enemy? Well, since you, you know like to do this and that, then that means that you're like this, right? Of course, I'm hearing that they are so many people, so many school systems are letting people come in and propose, oh, a different lifestyle to children. Second and first grade in some systems across the, the land. That's why... The parents have to reinforce, no, God doesn't make any mistakes. He made you this gender. He made you for a reason. Yeah, you might, you know, like this and that, but don't, don't, don't look at that as a weakness. That is a trait that Father God poured into you before the beginning of time. So flee fornication. Fornication is any sexual activity outside of the bounds of marriage. So I don't, you know, I don't focus on one act. Is hey, if you're married, okay. So that is the second word, effeminate, right? That that is an example of, you know, fornication. It is outside the bound of marriage. So the third E word is expedience. And Paul talks about like, yeah, you you're grown, you could do what you want. Right, all things in verse 12, all things are lawful unto me, but all things are not expedient. What does expedient mean? That means, you know, it's not profitable. It's not advisable. It's not advantageous. So yeah, you could stay up all night. You could go here. You could visit this club. You could do whatever you want. But is this going to get you to the place spiritually, naturally, in whatever way that you want to be, that you want to wind up? So it's always making a choice. And then the end of that scripture in verse 12 says, I will not be brought under the power of any. I'm not going to be a slave to anything or anyone, right? Only we are slaves to the Lord. We are 
servants of the master. That's why I said all of us are ministers. So there's something for us to think about. Are we under the control of the spirit or are we under a control of something else or someone else? Do we see ourselves in that list in verse 9 and 10? Extortioners, revilers, thieves, you know, abusers, crazy, bringing chaos. Or are we clear? And are we one that people can come to because we have shown that we are an example, another E word, for the world so that they could look and they see the light of God in our life. I hope you have a wonderful uh, remainder of Sunday, worshiping in spirit and truth. Make sure that you're the excellent example wherever you go.